What's the other thing? Um, how do we? How are we going to go about getting the metrics from social media? Like you've got Twitter with your followers, you know, Facebook with your likes. How do you actually turn all that tacit sort of knowledge into something concrete that you can use as a basis for the next economy? If that makes sense. Well, we, we talk. We talk about something called the last mile of social media, and that's kind of um, Twitter and Facebook and Google, and these are all great for talking to people like you and us. We're talking across the Pacific Ocean here. But, you know, how are these things helping us talk to our neighbors, the people next door? Because they've got the other part of the knowledge asset puzzle. I mean, you could be an accountant, but you need to be counting stuff produced by other people, and they live next door to you. So, you know, Facebook is great for talking to your friends in, across the country, but when will Facebook, when will these tools help people organize in local communities? That's, that's the big question. I believe that's the, uh, the key to your question there. Cool. So is that what the Ingenesis project's hoping to do, is like set up another kind of network that allows people to actually, you know, measure productivity that way and actually create well, a way? What we do is we specify something called the next economic paradigm, or we, call, we specify something called social capitalism, okay? Mm -hmm. What I mean we specify, I mean, we're, it's kind of, we're trying to write the rules to this game. What constitutes productivity? What, what are the things we're measuring? What is the algorithm? It, it, we're trying to write the rules, and we do so... Um, by copying directly the financial industry. How does the financial industry work? And we're staying very true to that with the single exception of swapping out those facts of production. Okay, so when we do that, a, a different picture emerges. It's somewhat counterintuitive, but, but that does emerge. Um, so your, your question is how do you measure productivity? Well, if you look at money, for example, money is, is um, the rate of change of money with respect to time is what's important to bankers. Bankers don't care about money. They care about the rate of change. We call that interest rate, right? The rate of change of money with respect to time. Now, the rate of change of the rate of change of money with respect to time, that is like your stock price or your growth rates. Okay, so we see there a, a, an algorithm. It's actually a differential equation. It's, it's, it's defined in the calculus. So if we look at... Um, What's happening in communities, people are out there, they're trading their knowledge. And how do they do that? By collecting data. So the rate of change of data with respect to time, we call information. And we call the rate of change of information with respect to time, knowledge. And we call the rate of change of knowledge with respect to time, innovation. And we call the rate of change of innovation with respect to time, wisdom. Okay, so that's an algorithm. It's a, it's, a, it's a differential equation. And again, you don't need to know how these equations work in order to buy a can of tuna fish. All you know is that dollar or that peso buys a can of tuna fish. You don't need to know what's on the back end with driving it. Yeah. But that is the algorithm that we developed, which is a pure analogy to the algorithm of money. Right. Okay, so, okay, so we get to something practical. Like if you wake up in the morning, what's the thing you're going to do today? in order to make money in social media. Well, you're going to collect some data and you're going to turn it into in information. And that's what bloggers do all day long. Yeah. Okay? And you're going to take that information and you're going to turn it into knowledge. Well, that's what people reading blogs do all day long. Okay? Then you can yeah. take that knowledge and you can turn it into innovation. That's what collections of people who read blogs and get together and do all day long. So you see the analogy is really, really quite durable and quite rigorous. And it, it appears all around us, and, and we just are just trying to put that in a, in a system, in a classic to specify that, and then let social entrepreneurs go off and do stuff. Far out. That, okay, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen that, just a layer upon layer upon layer just going out there. Oh, can you uh, have any ideas on like what type of platform that will uh, come around in? Have you got thoughts on where that will eventually start, where we can start measuring it and start going yeah, down? I guess it's already happening now, but there's nothing really to, to track each right. layer. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we developed something called the value game, and mm -hmm. it's actually game inside reality. It's sort of like first life goes to second life, you know, that video, that, that game, mm -hmm. that, that, that sort of quasi-reality online. Now, take that back into reality, you have third life, but it, it's something called the value game, and um, we're doing it now, we're launching an airline called um, socialflights.com. Now, Social Flights is taking all these corporate jets that are in the United States, and what we're trying to do is aggregate people in social media around the jet instead of aggregating the jets around the people. 
like they do in commercial airlines. Okay, so we're going to use, um, say for example, a, a, a takes a corporate jet, it takes a, in a commercial jet, it takes like 14 hours to get from Bellingham to Vail. Those are two cities in the States. 14 hours. If you could take a corporate jet, it takes you three hours. Okay, so the difference in that time is social value. Yeah, yeah. The people are willing to pay for. So what we're doing is we're starting to mix in social value with financial value. And we're trying to build a conversion factor between social value and financial value. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that, that's coming across. I think you got the rough idea there. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm... It's a target. Okay, so the value game plays out like this. For example, I would state that, um, that I want to fly from these two points. And I would, I would put that up, the, up on, a, on, a, on a platform. And what would happen was the airplane, the airplane, the cost to go in a corporate jet would be, say, twice as much as a private jet. But if you start aggregating people in, at the other side of the destination, like the hotel rooms and the automobile vendors and the transportation people and the tourists, and they all drop these coupons against that airfare, you can start bringing the cost of that airfare down. Okay, so that the door-to-door -door cost of that trip costs the same as the door-to-door -door cost of commercial airlines. Okay? So that's kind of what we're getting towards. We're trying to get an interaction between all the people who are surrounding a transaction and the social capital that they gain from being together, from working in communities, is part of the transaction. Um, right, so okay. instead of flying from two big cities, you fly according to your social graph on Facebook. You know, if you got your yeah. friends in Tennessee and your friends in Seattle, where you're going to get um, a lot of people that start aggregating around that sort of flight, rather than the hub and spoke system having to fly all the way down to Phoenix or um, that's just an example, but the value game can be applied to any fixed asset. And that's the ultimate goal, is to develop a system, develop a game that can be applied to any fixed asset, like a zip car or a bridge, public infrastructure. So now you're, you're taking the value which is inherent in people and the value which is inherent in infrastructure and making that part of the financial transaction. Okay, so it's kind of using social media at the moment to like connect with others who want to do a similar thing and then using a big group discount kind of that way and saying that we'll all be bringing this to it and therefore we should be... Yeah, yeah. brings the price down. Yeah. The overall. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So eventually you're going to wind up with the conversion factor between social value and financial, and financial value. How much are willing to, people willing to pay mm -hmm. to fly according to their social network? How much are willing to pay, people are willing to pay to have all these other coupons be part of the transaction? And once you can get a ratio between the two, then you can trade them against each other. Yeah. Do you kind of see Groupon as maybe an early version of that? Kind of how everyone, have, you've heard of Groupon? Well, Groupon is interesting, but I, I'm, not, I'm not certain that the Groupon is, 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 is the right answer. It's part mm -hmm. of the answer. Um, one of the phenomenons of, of, of Coupon, which is interesting, is mm -hmm. that you can look at it two ways. One is the price that the product costs with the discount, or discount. So if you have 50% off on a product, then that 50% off can be treated as a currency. It can be traded. Yeah. What I like to see, what I like to see is a great a big coupon exchange. So that if you get coupons in cameras and I get coupons in in uh, in automotive parts, we can put them all into an exchange and I can I could trade my coupons for your coupons. Right. That's kind of flipping it totally on its head. Yeah. <laughs> flip the whole thing on his head. So now you've got this exchange. It's, it's very similar to the the stock market. It's very similar to what you do with stocks. You've diversified a stock portfolio. You securitize assets by putting together in this big pool and then taking the net value of that pool and cutting it up into bonds or cutting it up into stocks or other securities. Well, why can't you do that with the face value of a coupon? Okay, see now you're, you see, see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So what you're doing now is you're aggregating people around, you're leveraging a product to aggregate people instead of aggregating people around a product. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? So advertising today is you're trying to get all these people to drink their sugar water, okay? <laughs> yeah. And that's the way the economy works. Mm -hmm. But if you were to now get everybody together and then Give it, it, around a certain product, around a certain commodity, then you have a different, quite a different economy. Probably a better one too. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, 
again, your knowledge is your knowledge is what becomes tangible, mm. and physical object is what becomes intangible. Mm. Whereas today, the machine or the the land, the labor, the capital, that's what's tangible, and what's between your ears is what's intangible. We're just flopping that around yeah. and it paints a new picture. So what do you see as the steps towards this? What, what needs to happen before this will end up happening? What, what do you see as the progression towards this end goal? Well, what we do is we publish everything to the public domain. Okay. We don't have any patents, we don't have any NDAs. What we're trying to do is just do this thing with the airplanes. Show how money can be made. Mm -hmm. Show how an improvement exists. Determine a convertibility between um, social currency and financial currency and then give it to, to, to social entrepreneurs. Um, social entrepreneurs, they'll know what to do next once we demonstrate and once we work out the bugs. But the intention purely is to, is to give this up to communities of people who will play a form of social arbitrage with it. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a gradual process by a social entrepreneurs. Nothing, no, the government won't step in and say, let's make this the new economy because that's likely well, to not happen. <laughs> The, the, the whole concept is we're building a knowledge inventory outside the concept of corporations. You know, corporations right now, your knowledge is sequestered within their skill codes, within the way they define their product. If you leave Amazon, well, you, you, you know, if you work at, at Boeing and you get laid off from Boeing, for example, nobody knows what you know because your knowledge is sequestered yeah, yeah. within Boeing. But if you have an external knowledge inventory outside the construct of corporations and vetted by communities, then your knowledge is tangible, it's, it's known, everybody can see it, and now the idea is to be able to predict the likelihood that a certain group of knowledge assets can execute a business plan in the future. Once you do that, you can build securities and you can capitalize. Awesome, and that's what you're doing uh, with Zertify, I noticed you posted the business plan uh, on your blog, that's pretty exactly. interesting. Yeah. You'll see that that blog has all the information that people need to do stuff, and you know, the matter of people being able to understand it, it's about matter of us being able to communicate it. But it's all up on that blog. Cool, awesome. So when do you think this will happen? What what's the, the time frame? When do you <laughs> see the the I don't know, the, the, the big end? Any rough ideas or just go step well, by step? I'm not sure about when it needs to happen. I know when it needs to happen. I think we're kind of in a race with time. Because mm -hmm. eventually a time will come when the dollar or existing currencies yeah. start losing their ability to store and exchange value. I mean, I don't know what to call that. A lot of people say the you know this debt economy is eventually going to encroach on the, the prior economy. I know Australia doesn't have these problems because they've had a very well. We've got China. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so I mean I'm not going to postulate, but that day will come. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've looked at, if you've seen other, you know, we'll call them devaluations or other economic crises. For example, in Mexico, I was there during their economic crisis, and the first thing they do is they empty out Walmart because those products become the de facto black market currency because tomorrow their, their dollar their pesos are going to be worth less. Yeah. So um, what we need to do is have a, something in place so that people can exchange value during this, this next economic um, transition, we'll call it. Cool. And that's what we believe will keep, the, will keep the, uh, the whole game alive, is to have at least some mechanism for people to, to um, exchange value. So, uh, any message to people watching this who want to like get involved and do stuff that way? Uh, anything that you think people should, yeah, check start out the blog, of course. Well, yeah, check out the blog, yeah. <laughs> well, some people are just going to make sense to other people. It's just going to go go out by. Them. Of course, I mean, not everybody's an economist, but but if you're interested in the stuff, you know, give me a call, follow us, follow what we're doing, and uh, you know, stay close. And we're giving everything away. It's all in the blog. And if you're involved in the next economic paradigm, then maybe we've got the tools that you need to. To, to articulate. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Thanks for joining us, Dan. It's been awesome. Well, thank you. Sorry, it took a little too long there, but I told you. Hi. Watch out. You know, <laughs> it's been perfect. fantastic. Uh, I'm, this has been High 45. Uh, I'm Tristan Grace. Yep, Nathan Waters. Catch you later. Wait, I'm there. We've probably done that. Yeah, well, because we haven't got the We really didn't, because we'll yeah, cut okay. it back or yeah, something. Okay. No. <laughs> it's yeah. all confusing. It's everywhere, man.